Good morning. This is WGTV Today. It is Monday, November 26th, the weekend after Thanksgiving. Good morning. I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best. Good morning. Glad to be back after a big, wonderful oh, Thanksgiving. My goodness, I, I know. know I'm about to <laughs> pop. I know, me too. But wasn't it wonderful? <laughs> it was great. Oh. I hope you had a nice Thanksgiving. It did. It was absolutely I ate entirely too much, as I always do. Well, yeah. That's part of it. I know. You know. That's part of the two meals in one day will do that to you. Two big Thanksgiving meals. Two. And we'll talk about that later. But just oh, two. Yes, just two. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Uh, only two. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, you have four. Well, I can't tell you now. Uh oh. There's more than two. Today, November twenty-sixth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being with us, and I hope you had a nice uh, and safe Thanksgiving. And I hope you were where you wanted to be during this holiday period. Well, we're off and running. The, uh, the holidays have started. Uh, Thanksgiving, the, you know, last week, uh, Downtown Lights Up, last what a Tuesday. great event that was. It was, you know, you know it was absolutely beautiful. We yeah. had children there that were representing different groups that got on the steps with the mayor, Indian princess groups, oh, yeah. and yeah. some um, children from the First Baptist Daycare. They yeah. came up and different ones did things with the mayor. It was such a beautiful yeah. evening. And we, the mayor flipped on those lights mm -hmm. at 5.30 and everything lit up. And I think people, it just immediately turned everybody into such a festive mood. I know, it always does. And, and, I, and one thing I love about the Downtown Lights Up event, it's almost a week old now it's been going. Yeah. But uh, um, the trolley rides. Isn't that nice? Oh, I love those. Big, All the way till Christmas. Yeah, I know. Every those Tuesday night. Belgian draft horses, uh -huh. they're beautiful and they clop clop like Belgian draft horses do. That's right. And you know, that was the first night. Yeah. That was the grand opening of the, the trolley mm -hmm. rides. And so the lines were so long because everybody wanted to do it. Yeah. And they had two different horse and carriages set up. Really? Mm -hmm. Now, they're tomorrow night as well. Yes. You get to ride the trolley rides every Tuesday every night. Every Tuesday How night. How much does it cost to ride that trolley? Free to the public. What? Free, Free to the public. And it's so nice because you ride all downtown and get to look at all the beautiful Christmas decorations. And it really is just, it's a very quaint, nice time just to relax and enjoy and think about the holidays. Oh boy, that is really nice. And guess what? We had snow on the 200 block of Center Street. Last week? We did. We did. We had, what? We had snow all, uh, you know, who knows? Who knows why it happened or, or, you know, how we had snow, but we did. Not going to tell that secret. That's a secret. That's a <laughs> but big it was secret. great. It was so nice. Oh, hey, speaking of secret, I ran into one of our uh, 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 one of our officers of the law here. Yes. One day last week, and he was commenting about uh, how he enjoyed our visit to the Secret Garden. You remember going oh, out to yes, Pipeful to I the sure Secret did. Garden? That was a nice visit. That was. I've never Hall. been before, I so I learned either. a lot. I did too. It was great going out there. We'll have to go out there sometime again whenever she's having an event going on. Oh yeah, okay. Oh boy. <laughs> that's yeah, that's good. Yeah. Speaking of events, on yes. today's programs, you will uh, you'll be talking with someone about uh, a crossroads. Uh, yes, you'll be I doing... talked about two art with two artists. Mm -hmm. One is from New York and one is from North Carolina, and they have partnered together and done some really creative, unusual things. Really? Yeah, I oh, met yeah. with them over the Paramount. Oh, okay. Also coming up uh, today on today's program, we'll be visiting the Animal Adoption and Education Center a little later on. And uh, you talked with LaTerry Ward about uh, MLK. Yes, they have a huge celebration that will take place, of course, in January. Right, uh, during the month gives, of his birth. Of course, right. and she will give you some information of how this event has changed. This is our 25th anniversary of hosting that here in the city. Really? And she's going to talk to you about how it's evolved through the years yeah. and, and what the big celebration will be like this oh, year. Oh, that's great. So we have a full program today. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, I can't wait. Plus, we're going to look over uh, the almanac to see maybe who's celebrating a birthday and maybe who's not celebrating a birthday. Are you celebrating a birthday? My mom was back in October. Oh, okay. Well, she's not celebrating and, and <laughs> I'm not either. No, not today. When was yours? I don't remember. It was sometime this year. Was I know it? that. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. And, but I only had one this year. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with the program. <laughs> All right, we're going to turn this over to you now as, we, right. as Kim talks with someone on the uh, crossroads. All right. That's Welcome to WGTV Today. I'm Kim Best, your host, and I'm excited today to have two musicians with me today that are sharing the news of connecting crossroads. They are visiting the state of North Carolina, and let's hear what they've got to say. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having us. Absolutely. So I hear you've been to Goldsboro High School today. We have, and the yeah. Wayne School of Engineering. We had two assemblies this morning. It was a great bunch of kids. 
So did you have a full house over there? Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you yeah. did. I'm sure, sure you did. a lot did. of energy in that room. Yeah, I can only imagine. <laughs> now tonight you have something else that you're offering our community, don't you? Sure. Yes, yeah, it's the, uh, the album called The Collide. It's 12 songs that uh, Laura Lynn Dawson and I have composed. Um, we'll have a quintet of musicians. And we'll also have a few um, a local and regional artists joining us um, as an opening act uh, for the formal concert. Well, tell me about yourselves. If you would, tell us your names and tell us how this project mm. began and how it all came together. Sure. Well, oh. you were in on the beginning of the project. Yeah, you know, my name is Daniel Bernard Romain. I'm a composer, uh, performer, and a proud uh, small business owner <laughs> from uh, Harlem in New York City. Um, I was invited by North Carolina State University to consider a project that could tour the state. And instead of doing the thing that a composer would normally do, touring a string quartet or yes. a smaller ensemble, I decided I wanted to work with a North Carolina-based singer-songwriter, uh, create and compose and co-write um, about a dozen songs, record them in North Carolina, and then uh, tour them throughout the state. And that's exactly what we've been doing. That's what we've done. It's been very successful. Along with the album, I had always envisioned uh, open, an opening act comprised of, of local artists um, to, to talk about the unique uh, and um, um, timely um, and relevant aspect of our collaboration. So by extension, inviting um, local and regional artists to, to collaborate with us in some cases, but also to express themselves and to do whatever it is that they wanted to do. In, in response to, to our work. And we've had everything from 165 string players oh on the stage mm -hmm. in, um, in uh, 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 East Carolina oh yes. uh, University in Greenville to um, a wonderful um, um, musical theater group um, doing excerpts from uh, The Colored Purple, the musical oh, um, in yeah, Wilmington, Wilmington, in Wilmington, North Carolina. Was that uh, a UNCW? Mm -hmm. uh, correct. Mm -hmm. and, um, and here we'll have uh, a couple of principals who will be playing music with us and some of their students. And we we'll don't mean principal violinists, we mean the principals right. of the high school. The high school? Principals of the high school. <laughs> yeah, what a unique right. twist. Yes, they're that's both right. going to come play with us tonight. That's it's exactly be right. Oh, wow. Exactly right. wow. Well, yeah. tell me about yourself before we get into the meat of this. If you'll sure. tell me a little bit about yourself. Sure. I am a singer-songwriter. I live in Greensboro, North Carolina. And I started uh, in that part of my career uh, later. I'd done some other jobs, and I have three grown daughters. Um, I've started out with a band called Polecat Creek, and then got into writing for theater with Triad Stage. Recently did a big collaboration with the North Carolina Symphony. And about two years ago, I got a call from some folks at the North Carolina Arts Council mm -hmm. telling me about Daniel and about the idea for this project, and asked if I might want to join them. And and as I've done all along, you know, I something will come up and I'll go, well, huh, I've never done that before. <laughs> and Each one is very unique. Yeah. Mm. And I, you know, I try to say yes to things that will really challenge me and stretch me and are, that are new ground. And so, uh, yeah, we started talking on the phone. Then we did finally get together and start working about in January, about 11 months ago. So the, the intensive part of it has been in this year, in the, this calendar year. Well, what is unique about these songs? I hear that there are very unique things that are happening throughout the state, and these songs will be evidence of that. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, you know, the songs are a composer and a singer-songwriter's response to the things happening in the state. Um, as everyone knows, you know, your state is in the midst of changes politically, demographically, um, and the relationship between, let's say, um, new ideas and old ideas is in collision. Yes. Um, that said, I think each community in the state has its own unique uh, tensions, but also has its own unique beauty. Absolutely. And um, the differences between Laura Lynn and I are pretty obvious and evident. As I like to say, the art lies in the things that we share in common. So many of the songs on the album have to do with th these kind of um, aesthetics, these things that are um, poorly defined um, or ill-defined. And, you know, there are songs in the album, the titles tell you a lot, Fall to the Sea, 
has to do with the relationship of the, um, of the east coast of, of North Carolina to the ocean. And not only the devastation, mm -hmm. um, but the people's um, allegiance to, to everything that is good and everything that is problematic with living near the ocean. Um, and there, you know, every song in the album has its own um, unique quality and aspect to what is unique and I think uh, very important about North Carolina. And you've spent time here. Well, of course, you've lived here for many years, mm -hmm. but you've spent time here, so you've gotten mm -hmm. to know our area and our state by traveling across. And, and tell me some of the, the places that you've performed and been throughout this year. Sure. Well, uh, there are five universities involved, so uh, Appalachian State, Davidson, NC State, where we are this week, mm -hmm. um, ECU and Wilmington mm -hmm. are the five universities, and then Goldsboro is, or Wayne County is a, mm -hmm. a, a satellite of the NC State mm -hmm. uh, program, and we spent a day in Ashe County um, when we were up in Boone. Uh, so there's seven presenters in, all together. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you so are getting to yeah, know our Yeah, we've state. been mountains mount <laughs> yeah. to see. Yes, that's and right. back, yes. back and yeah. forth a couple times. That's so. right. Yeah. Wow. Well, tell me about your musical backgrounds. What instruments you play? Who inspired you? Mm -hmm. How you got in the business? Sure. <laughs> oh, okay. Whatever take you want to go with that. Okay. Sure. Well, I play the guitar uh, mainly because it's the easiest thing to play while I'm also singing. So right. I'm, I'm more of a you know, singer-songwriter than I am an instrumentalist. Um, and I got into that in my mid-30s. I had been a singer all through my childhood and stopped to work and raise a family. And I was just missing having music in my life. And I didn't uh, plan for it to be a job, I, but I did get serious about it fairly quickly and it ended up being a better job than the one I already had. <laughs> wow. So so that is uh, how it's I It's funny what up. doors will open. Yeah, that's kind of kind of what happened. So um, and it's been really fun and, and I really every day wake up going, Wow, what a great job I have and and have had all kinds of experiences that I couldn't have imagined. So it's it's really been a great um, you know second career I guess. Yeah. Right. Well, Daniel, how about you? I started playing the violin when I was five years old. Um, over the years, I started playing about uh, 25, 26 different instruments My um, as a composer. Um, I have a doctorate from the University of Michigan in music composition and theory. And I moved to New York City about 15 years ago. I also own a uh, townhome in Boston. Um, uh, I'm raising a son, co-raising, co-parenting a son uh, there. And he also spends time with me in, in Harlem, in New York City. And um, I've been making, I've always made my living, and um, I've been playing professionally since I was probably about 12, 13 years old. And Goodness, I've 12 or 13 years old. Sure, I mean, How well, you know, wow. well, in South Florida at the time, there were a lot of 12 and 13 and 14 year olds um, playing out in clubs and, you know, probably doing things they shouldn't have been doing. <laughs> but, making but that music, was but making music, <laughs> yes. And we all went to the same performing arts high school. We all went to either to New York City or to some college, so on and so forth. I actually went to Vanderbilt in uh, Nashville, Tennessee mm -hmm. for my undergraduate. But the last 15 years I've been in New York City as a professional musician, as a professional composer. Lots of different collaborations with Bill T. Jones, Philip Glass, Savion Glover, the photographer Jonathan Mannion, DJ Spooky, um, you know, so on and so forth. This is a very important collaboration as well, and you know I'm 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 privileged. I, I like to say I'm a victim of privilege, in that um, as a small business owner, as someone who has a as a production company that is supporting my work, I have the ability to be uh, vitally involved in the production um, and the um, coming together of these different performing arts entity entities into a coalition. And you know this is very important. I think artists um, are not always taken as seriously. Absolutely. If they talk about economics, if they talk about well the production side of, of, of their craft. But you know this has always been the case, certainly for classical music, certainly for commercial artists, but specifically for classical composers, um, um, uh, Akagum, John Dunstable, um, Beethoven, Stravinsky, Schoenberg, now John Adams, Steve Reich. They're all into intimately involved in the business aspects of their craft. And I say that because I think we're at a time in our country where the performing art is seen as a luxury, right. something that can be cut, mm -hmm. something that isn't vital. And by vital, I mean something that has real 
economic gravitas um, and sustainability and contribution. This is critical, actually, to what's happening to your arts funding in this You're state. You're exactly right. right. So I'm being purposeful as defining myself for this project, lest we forget. We are composers, singers, songwriters. We are performers. And we are both small business owners that pay our taxes mm -hmm. and contribute to and the... employ a lot of other people. Yes, and contribute mm -hmm. to the financial sustainability of this great state. And this particular project has done very well economically and has reached a lot of children simultaneously. Wow. Well, you know, talking about children and, and youth that have these dreams and these aspirations of being musicians themselves, mm -hmm. what, would you, what would you say to them? What would, what would be your words of wisdom to youth that want to aspire to be like you both? Well, a young lady actually approached me today after one of the uh, concerts and, and was asking that exact thing. And, I, you know, for her, she's a guitar player and a singer, and she's trying to figure out what to do. And I just said, keep doing that, you know, That's, which sounds simple, but it really isn't. There are lots of things that um, take their attention, and, and there are lots of things that are kind of not cool about being the kid who spends a lot of time practicing or, right. or who, the kid who gets up on stage and draws attention to themselves and um, so just to encourage th uh, them to to keep going and keep putting themselves out there and keep working uh, again sounds simple but is that's the work you know perfect your craft yeah yeah yeah, uh, you know, we spoke at a, a scholars forum on the mm -hmm. campus of North Carolina State University. About 300 or plus uh, undergraduate students, m largely undergraduate, I'm, I'm assuming, 300 plus college students. And I always say that you know, dreams are mysterious things. We all have them, but they are like apparitions. They're elusive. Um, dreams are supported by goals. Mm -hmm. Goals are supported by plans. And plans really begin with going to the office every day, getting up every day and participating in a rigorous set of um, skills and practices and jobs and skill set and skill set building. Um, all of this having to do with making your dream real. So that's a very good lesson, I think, for any, anyone. It really is. I like the trickle down that you said because w w youth mm -hmm. a lot of times see big dreams or uh, not just youth, all of us have sure. these big dreams, but it's hard to understand how planning That's right. reach is how you That's reach right. those dreams. That's right. Plans leading to goals and goals leading to our dreams. So, you know, it's one thing to say you want to be a musician or you want to be an artist or you want to be famous mm -hmm. or maybe all three. Right. It's another thing to deal with the practical reality of making those dreams real and achieving them and having a model, having a system in place um, that you're doing every day. So these are the things that I talk about. As I like to say, um, you know, I still have dreams. Many of my dreams have come true, but not all of them. And, uh, and I think that, you know, one thing that's very sobering to me as I raise my young son, he's three years old, um, he already has dreams, you know? And if his dream were to be a violinist like his father, and I, I hope not, but if that, <laughs> if that were his dream, I'm sobered by the fact, it's sobering, to know that he could not play the, start playing the violin at five years of age, which is only in two short years, if he were growing up where I grew up, because those programs are gone. Those instruments discarded, um, those jobs, those occupations lost, mm -hmm. and, and just as importantly, those children not being turned on. Mm -hmm. as they say. It's not that everyone has to be a musician or an artist, it's that the arts help us achieve our dreams. They are, import they are as important as, um, as, as our president says, arithmetic, right? right? Mm -hmm. Well, as our former president and current mm -hmm. president mm -hmm. have both used that word. Right. But remember the three R's? Reading, writing, arithmetic. Arithmetic. <laughs> arithmetic. Right? That's right. right. Well. <laughs> Forgot the A. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Well, yes. there, there's something about resolve as well. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that I like to say when our politicians inevitably fail us, artists can lead the way. Artists can lead the way. And, and it is our job, I think, and this is what we've been doing. We've met with close to 1,000 Goldsboro children this morning already mm -hmm. over the course of two assemblies talking about these very things in a very dramatic, very theatrical, 
very um, self-esteem building mm -hmm. way, you know. So I can talk about the performing arts and we can talk about the performing arts and posture and it actually means something because they see us do it. Right. And as I like to say to them, I will never ask you to do something I won't do myself. Wow. Well, you know, I can only imagine how much seeing you both on stage and hearing what you've got to say and hearing about your experiences, how it affects the youth, especially those with hopes and dreams and aspirations yes. of being in the music industry in whatever way. Yeah. In, in whatever way is and, right And not just the music industry, but Any, in anything, anything that they want mm -hmm. to pursue. You know, I, I, we, I said this this morning, between your dreams will be something or someone. Are you prepared? If you are prepared, show me, mm -hmm. you know? If you're 18 years old, show me 39. It's a wonderful thing. If you're, oh, yeah. six, you're six, show me 12. You know, inevitably a 12-year-old knows to s stand up oh, a little yeah. straighter. <laughs> In their mind, oh, this is what it means to be 12. Mm -hmm. And they're right, you know, they're right. So, you know, I, again, I'm, I'm biased, but I think the performing arts, we are uniquely qualified to positively influence and reinforce all of the academic pursuits. You know, unfortunately, unfortunately, we don't see music education as an important part of a total education. And it is. It makes the whole job. It is. Arts education, I shouldn't just say music, arts education, mm -hmm. not the all dancing, the visual arts, right. so on and so on. Arts education really is a very important part of our total education. I totally agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> You've convinced me. We don't have me. to argue. No, no <laughs> arguing whatsoever. <laughs> well, it sounds like I was going to ask you what are your goals for this whole program, but it sounds like I'm hearing. I'm yeah. hearing what your goals are yeah. with, with crossing the state of North Carolina and, and sharing your and dreams and, and what you've accomplished through your years, what you've learned, and what you hope to give back mm. to our youth. Very good. Yeah. Well, That's great. thank you both so much well, for being we'll here see with you us this evening. Absolutely, yeah. tonight is it seven? It's at seven o'clock. Seven yes. o'clock. And we'll have Paramount. our full band and uh, some great performers from both high schools. Yes. And uh, it's going to be really oh, that's fun. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you all have a website? We do. We do. Well, there's connectingcrossroads.com. Right. Right. Dot com. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. also DBR. My initials: Daniel Bernard Romain. DBRmusic.com. And I have laurelandassa.com. And Perfect. Yeah. And if you forget all these things, you can actually Google search uh, The Collide. The Collide. And you'll okay. find us. You can Google search DBR. You can Google search Laura Lynn Dossett. Yeah. And these things come up. And as I like, you know, tonight is one of these rare events where both young people and older people can come. Parents can come with their children. Of course. You know, parents can come with their tweens or their teenagers. And these things are very, very rare. Um, I like, it's a, it is a concert, but it's also communion. You know, it's a time to sit next to someone that perhaps you don't know and believe and share in ideas that really have to do with your community. Well, we're excited to hear Great. and see what you all have experienced <laughs> and what these songs have, have ended up being that, that tell the story about our state. Yes. Well, I, and I want to also say I'm just so excited to play in this theater because I know the history here and yeah. I know the story of the rebuilding of this theater and it, um, there's you can feel it when you walk in the building. So I'm really excited to just stand on that stage, stage and, oh. and sing. It's tonight. a special place. It really is. It's it a is. special place it's in our community and welcome. Thank you. We're Thank glad you. to be here. We're Thank glad you. to have you. Thank All you so much. We'll, we'll look forward to seeing you soon. All right. Yes. Thanks. And we're back on WGTV today and it is the Monday after Thanksgiving weekend. And I hope you had a safe holiday weekend. Mm -hmm. I know the I know the highways were packed, weren't they? Yeah. You know, I was I was listening to um, the news and, and trying to hear about the safety and, and making sure that people were safe during those yeah. holidays because they were saying that that is the busiest time of the year, yeah. both on the roads, of course, and in the airways as well. Yeah. They were saying um, recently on one of the morning shows, uh, other than our morning show, of course. Imagine that. There's another one. I, I don't know. It only comes on sporadically. <laughs> I don't watch sporadically, so I don't, don't. I don't know anything about it. But they were saying the, the Friday after Thanksgiving of all times yeah. was one of the busiest, and then Sunday, of course, the well, Sunday after Thanksgiving. This past Friday and yep. then yesterday, mm -hmm. the busiest times for the That's right. Well, well I know that's, that's true. I went to uh, Greensboro to visit my sister, and, uh, and it was uh, I'm it was sure packed. you had a lot it of traffic. It was packed. On what the day highways. did you come back? I came back, I came back Friday. Did you? Yeah. The day after? It was packed. I'm yeah. sure. Well, you stayed safe. Yeah, I did. I wore my seatbelt. I always do, except when I'm not in the vehicle. 
Well, okay, <laughs> coming up on December 1st, that is this Saturday mm -hmm. at 10 a.m., uh, everyone's invited to Wayne Center, the Extension and the Community Association there. Going to have a big uh, Christmas festival and bazaar. Uh, that's coming up beginning at 10, going until 2 o'clock this Saturday at Wayne Center at the corner of George and Chestnut Streets in Goldsboro. Now, they're going to have homemade and homegrown and handmade and hand-painted craft and food items. Goodness. Lunch will be available as well for sale. Uh, bazaar items, that's bazaar items. Uh, make uh, great gifts for teachers and co-workers and family. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Claus will be in town. They'll be there that day uh, with lots of uh, fun, free activities for the youngsters as well. There'll be drawings. There'll be all kinds of stuff to do, and, uh, and that's coming up. Don't miss that. That's going to be a lot of fun. That's December 1st. That is this Saturday. Can you believe it's this already Saturday? December? Yeah. Oh, wow. I know. That's what I said. Well, November oh, wow. just... It did. Flew by. It did. It was like November was like, you know, had lost a day or three, you know. Like, we uh, blinked and it was over. It was over. That's exactly right. Uh, well, what know, else is going on? At the Arts Council, they have a long list of activities going on, but a lot of them are all, of course, related to the holidays. So if you need to get in the spirit and you want to do some active artwork, you can go to the Arts Council of Wayne County. They have ornament painting. Ornament painting? Yes, let's oh, see. Oh, boy. November 27th. Oh, my goodness, that's tomorrow. Yeah. That's yeah, tomorrow. Tuesday. Tomorrow at 6.30, ornament painting with Sarah Merritt at the Arts Council. Now, do they have to be your ornaments, or can you sneak into your neighbor's house and paint theirs? You, you can't paint anybody else's. Oh, you they can have only to paint be, your Oh, okay. Yes, I was yes. just wondering. <laughs> they don't that. want your art. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, they <laughs> don't want my art. You can oh. decorate your own tree with okay, your art. Okay, that's good. But that's tomorrow. Let's see what else they have. So much going on there. Oh, the first <clears> Friday <throat> in every month, the Arts Council has... Um, an area where you can mingle with local artists. It, the next one is December the 7th, and it's the first Friday in every month, actually. But the next one coming up is December the 7th. You can meet with the artist. There at the Arts Council, they have studios upstairs. You can see their particular art. I you remember when part. we went yes. and met with Brenda Bayer? I do remember that. And yeah. the Arts the arts uh, Council uh, site on John Street is just a, in the corner of John and, and Walnut. Right. It's a fantastic place. Well, there's lots of um, art classes upstairs yeah. and art studios. And, and Wayne and I met with Brenda Bayer earlier, one of the local artists, and, and talked with her. But then we peeked in the windows I as did. we walked by of all the other yeah. studios. And, sure oh, did. my goodness, yeah. what beautiful beautiful artwork they had yeah, in there. It is, it is, but don't don't tell people we peeked in the windows. <laughs> well, we looked in the windows. But there you go. <laughs> we looked in the windows and there was beautiful artwork in there. <laughs> I don't think they minded. <laughs> okay, all right. They no, didn't they didn't mind. really. They were they waved. Oh, they're also having a wreath making class. Have you ever oh, really? made a wreath? I've never made a wreath. I haven't either. But we can go do that on December the fourth. And the 11th, actually, there are two Tuesdays, December 4th and December the 11th, wreath-making okay. classes um, at the Arts Council of Wayne County. That number is 736-3300 if you're interested in participating. All right. The uh, public library, uh, goes for Wayne County Public Library, uh, of course, they're back open now, and they'll be open after the uh, Thanksgiving holidays. They'll be open That's now right. until the Christmas holidays. Uh, and then now until December 22nd will be open. And then on December 24th, 25th, and 26th, that's a Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the uh, Wayne County uh, Goldsboro Public Library will be closed those three days. That's Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, uh, December 24th, 25th, 26th. And uh, looks like going to open Monday, December 21st, uh, excuse me, December 31st from 9 a.m. until 6 p.m. And on New Year's Day, they will be closed. So they'll open that one day in between it the holidays. Looks that way, yeah. Looks that way. All right. Well, everybody's got to enjoy the time with their family. Well, yes, indeed. Of course we do. Certainly should. Certainly mm -hmm. should. All right. And don't forget now for Medicare, uh, folks uh, who are enrolled under Medicare, if you want to change, this is the last week to change your plan. Uh, your Medicare Part D plan. This is the last week you have now until December 7th to change that plan. All right, and that everything goes into effect January 1st, and you won't be able to change it again until after the uh, until uh, the end of next year. That's right. All last right? Of the year. Once you're in that plan, you're there for a year. That's right, and you know who can help you with that. If you have any questions, Aaron McAuliffe at the Senior Center can help you with that. 
All right. And Wayne, mark your calendars December the 7th and 8th. Okay. Get your pen. Okay. <laughs> December the 7th and 8th from 4 to 8 p.m. at Herman eight. Park. 4 to 8. 4 to 8. Okay. At Herman Park, okay. they're going to have a big program. It's their annual Jingle in the Park. Oh, okay. Have you ever been? I have. I have been, and it oh, is beautiful, fantastic. It? They light up the entire Herman Park. There are lights everywhere. Mm. I mean, that park comes alive. It does come alive. I'll they have entertainment in the gazebo. They have refreshments. Oh, they, it's such a fun night. And, of course, the Kiwanis train will be oh, yeah. running that Ooh. night. They call it the Polar Express. Polar Express. Yes. Yeah. But it'll be a fun night. Two nights, actually. This year's the first time they've ever done it for two nights. The 7th and the 8th, Friday and Saturday night. It's so usually it is just two Friday, nights, then. but it's Friday, two nights. Friday and Saturday. Four to eight p.m. Jingle in the park. What time is that again? Four o'clock, Wayne, four, until eight p.m. Four o'clock, Wayne, till eight p.m. <laughs> okay. Herman Park it. Center. I got it. All right, that's great. That's well, right. let's well, let's see what's up next. Next <clears throat> is, I believe you had a talk with the animal shelter. I did. I did went out to visit? the uh, cooperative to the cooperative. I went out to the <laughs> cooperative animal adoption and education center. And, uh, and here's what happened. Today we're at the Animal Adoption and Education Center on Clingman Street here in Goldsboro with Vicki Falconer. And what's your name? Uh, Daryl Powers. And Daryl Powers is with us. Daryl, you work here as well, right? Yes, sir. All right. And, and who is this? This is Joy. Joy. Hi, Joy. <laughs> How old is Joy? Joy's about four months old. About four months old. Uh, will Joy get any bigger? Yeah, she's still going to get bigger. Okay, going to get a little bigger. What kind of dog? Uh, we've got her as a boxer mix. Boxer maybe mix. Maybe some boxer lab. Okay. Maybe a little bit of boxer lab. <laughs> 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 All right. And Joy is up for adoption and can be yours. Now, uh, we're, and by the way, I want to mention where we are here. We're sitting on some new benches here. Uh, uh, this was an Eagle Scout project from Troop 28, right? Yes, sir. And what a grand job this is. This is just amazing. These things are heavy, they're solid, and, uh, uh, and, a, and a nice uh, addition to the Animal Adoption Center here on Clingman Street. We appreciate all the work. This was an Eagle Scout Project, Project 28. Thank you very much. Now, back to Joy. So Joy's about four months old, a boxer, maybe a little bit of lab, and loves to have her ears scratched, right? <laughs> <laughs> and playful. She is very playful. All right, we'll make a, and uh, I, I can only guess you enjoy, you like children, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Joy is ready for adoption. She is, got her Christmas name ready to go. Oh, yes, Joy. Okay. Joy. Well, it could have been Noel as well, but Joy's good too. But, uh, so how does someone adopt Joy? You can just come in here to the shelter. Like uh, Wayne said, it's at 1600 Clingman Street. We are here Monday through Friday from 10 to 530. And Saturdays from 10 to 12, you would come in and fill out an application for adoption. And if you so choose it to be Joy, just let them know when you come in. Excellent. And Joy is our pet of the week. And uh, for now, Thanksgiving is now behind us. Yes, it is. Right. And so for Christmas, now Joy would make a wonderful Christmas gift, but we want to be very careful about Christmas gifts, pets as Christmas gifts. Pets, uh, pets for gifts, those, it can be very difficult because you may get it for somebody and they may not really want it or they don't know how to handle it. Um, so make sure if you're getting it for a pet that it's your own family, maybe your own pet rather than for somebody. All right. Anyway, yeah, use a little common sense there. And of course, uh, Vicki or, or anyone, or Daryl, anyone with the fine, the fine staff here at the Animal Control, the Animal Adoption and Education Center can help you with that. The Animal Adoption and Education Center. What's that phone number, Vicki? It is 919-731-1439. 731-1439. And Joy, our one of our pets of the week, all right? Excellent. Thank you, Joy. This week's cat of the week is Gatsby. Gatsby is a two-year-old, solid black, long-haired male cat. Gatsby is also a neutered male cat and has that natural curiosity about him. And you can adopt Gatsby today for only $10. So call the Animal Adoption and Education Center now and ask about Gatsby. Gatsby, a two-year-old neutered male, you can adopt today for only $10. Gatsby needs a home, needs a forever home, and uh, he's a fun cat and only two years old. 
So ask about Gatsby for only $10 today at the Animal Control and Adoption Center. We're back on WGTV today. Thank you for being with us. It is a Monday. It is November 26th. Are you still full from Thanksgiving? Oh, I'll be full for the next eight months, I think. You know, this, and I love, look, I love I this too. time of year. I love, I love this time of year I because it's just, it's, it's special. It's special and I love the tradition. I do too. Now, you know, we've talked about that so many times, yeah. Wayne, about the traditions that, that make things interesting and you can pass these traditions on to your, to your children. Yes. And if you don't have any traditions, you can create some. Sure you can. You, you can create them and start them this year. Never too late to start. That's right. And that's one of the things that we're talking about this year on the show is we are wanting you to send in, email your traditions to us so we can talk about them and share them with the community. Yeah, do we have to send them back or can we keep them? We can keep them. Oh, boy. <laughs> you can email them to WGTV at WayneGov.com and we will share with the community what you do and what is special with your family that you do through the holidays. I've shared several that I, that I do with my family. We'd like to hear from you. So email that to us and we will share it with the community. That's a great idea. Well, how about that? Well, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I know. All right, let's see. Today is November the 26th. Uh, today is National Don't Utter a Word Day. Oh, we are in trouble then. Yeah, we are, we in, are trouble. in trouble. I, uh, I utter all the time. <laughs> utter, 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 utter. <laughs> That's a reminder to talkers that listeners usually get tired of listening long before talkers get tired of Love talking. talking. Well, there you go. There's something to think about there. Mm -hmm. Today is also Cyber Monday, traditionally the beginning of the online Christmas shopping yes. season. Very big. It but is you know, big. one of the things that I've heard a lot of talk about recently, because so many people are shopping online, mm -hmm. a lot of the larger stores are having difficulty staying in business. Yes, uh, you know, and that they are talking about if they don't see a turnaround this year, that a large, a lot of the larger stores are gonna have to cut back on how many people they hire through the holidays. So less jobs if people continue to buy so much online. And there may be less storefronts mm -hmm. of the big stores. Mm -hmm. There may be less storefronts because of that. But we are a resilient people yes, that we, we are. are, and we will find a way around all that. If it's negative, we'll find a way around uh, Of course it. we will. You know, and the thing is, uh, take this time of year and make positive. And we want to encourage people to shop locally. Yes. That's one of the ways we can help our, our community's economy is to buy things right here in Goldsboro, right That's here right. in Wayne County. That's a positive. That's a very positive. Yeah. You know, if you purchase things from, you can go to the art market, and purchase unique things like jewelry and paintings and the list goes on and on, painted furniture. You can go to any of our stores here in our community That's right. and purchase things and that money stays right here. It stays here and it helps you. It does. In many ways that you don't even know about. It does help. It helps if you buy locally. In fact, you can go to the art market, you can go to the curb market. Exactly. That's one of my favorite places. We know, we saw that not long ago. Yeah, I know, the curb <laughs> market at uh, uh, on Friday afternoons out at Wayne Center. Mm -hmm delicious home cooking but buy locally and if you if you if you're looking for something in particular and you just can't find it here okay go online it's okay but if you I bet if you look hard enough you'll find what you're looking for right here in Wayne County that's right all right what today, else is going on today is price is right day the price the, is right the price is right popular daytime TV show debuted this day 1956 what was his name Bob Barker Bob, Bob Barker, Barker was one of the later. Yes, he was. I believe Bill Cullen was on there for a while. I don't know if you remember who he was. Bob's he, the only. I mean, Bob Barker's the only one I remember. Well, he was on there for so long. Yeah. Spay and neuter guy. Yeah, so, that's uh, all he talked about. That's all he ever talked about. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. But uh, uh, that was uh, this day, 1956. 56 years ago today, wow. first went on the air, and I think. There were other hosts as well, but the most uh, popular was, was Bob Barker. And of and course, now you have Drew Carey. Drew Carey, a very funny guy yes. who's lost a lot of weight. He certainly has. Looking pretty good there, too. He looks too. great. Yeah, he does look good. And he, he's gone from the, from the, the dark-rimmed glasses to the more yes. fashionable glasses. And you know what? They are the first, uh, this is the first time that they have ever hired a male, I don't know what you call it, like model, that show, showcases all the... <laughs> 
that showcases <laughs> all of their items that are on the Price is Right. First time ever in history that really? they've had a male Really? In person. 56 years? Yes. This is the first year ever. Tell us what's behind door number two. <laughs> Gerard. I think that's Let's Make a Deal. Isn't it? Oh, I guess it, it is, isn't it? Yeah, let's make a deal, I Monty Hall. Yeah, yeah okay. I think that's let's make a deal. Hey, I've got my game shows all mixed <laughs> up here. All right, up next, who? Okay, oh, one of my favorite, favorite. I'm, yes. I'm a movie buff, old movies. Uh, mm -hmm. Love old movies. One of my favorites was was uh, open this day at a uh, at the Hollywood Theater in New York City, what 1942. Have you ever seen Casablanca? Of course I have. It's uh, amazing. It's an awesome movie. One of my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm a Bogart fan anyway. Well, speaking of movies, yes. if you would like to see a great movie, I'd love to. Well, then go to the Paramount Theater on Tuesday, December the 18th. Yes. And you can see It's a Wonderful Life on a very large screen, sitting in a very comfortable chair really? in a beautiful theater. With Jimmy Stewart and Donna Reed. Yes, wow. yes. Wow. They're showing movies. Once a month now, and for this month, it's Tuesday, December the, I believe it's 18th, at 7 p.m. It's a wonderful life at the Paramount Theater. And the question remains, does Clarence get his wings? <laughs> that's the you question. You have to wait and see. You have to wait and see. Go to the movie. That's right. All right. That's great. Yes, yes, yes. Miami Dolphin quarterback Dan Marino set an NFL record this day in 1995 with his 343rd touchdown pass he did. He broke <laughs> Fran Tarkenton's record. Birthdays today include... Basketball's Sean Kemp, he's 43, and one of my favorite entertainers of all time, Ms. Tina Turner. Oh, yes. Woo, she oh, yes. is she 73, and she, she rocks. I mean. I'm telling you. Saw her in concert. Did you? Oh, she was amazing. Just, that was several years ago, but uh, she's still amazing. Still performing at 73. Wow. Yep. That's fantastic. It well, is. you know what? Mark your calendars for December the 1st. Oh, wait a minute. Ah, okay, December 1st. You know that group we love to support, the Boys and Girls Club. Oh, They're yeah. having their annual pancake breakfast at 7 a.m. December 1st. December the 1st, pancake breakfast at uh, Boys and Girls I Club. I love the pancake breakfast. It is always delicious, always great. And, mm -hmm. of course, you're supporting the Boys and Girls Club of Wayne right. County. Okie dokie. Who is up Smokey. next? Let's find out where we go next. Oh, where we're do we talking go next? with LaTerry Ward. Oh, yeah, okay. About the Martin Luther King celebration in January. So let's hear what she's got to say. Hi, and welcome to What's Happening in Your City. I'm Kim Best, your host, dedicated to keeping you informed on news and events that are happening in the city of Goldsboro. Today, I'm joined by LaTerry Ward, the Director of Community Affairs with the City of Goldsboro. Good morning and Good welcome. Good morning, Kim. How are you? I'm great this morning. That's good. I'm excited to hear about the Martin Luther King program that we have obviously had for many years. Tell me about that. Oh, yes. The Martin Luther King program is a collaboration of citizens in the community. It's roughly about 20 people that serve on this committee. And it is spearheaded by the city, but is also supported by the county. So it's a city-county program that we operate. And how long has this been a joint effort? This is, this is our 25th year, city and county, but it's the 28th year for the federal government and the 27th year for the state of North Carolina. Well, my goodness, tell us how this has evolved through the years. I know you said this is your 25th year. Yes. Uh, tell us how it has changed and, and how the numbers have changed through the year of attendees as well. Oh, absolutely. The first one was back in 1988. And we have roughly about 75 people to attend. A nice crowd for your first year. Oh, yes. But now it's well over 500. And we've done some little tweaking and had to move around a little bit uh, to be able to accommodate like people. <laughs> and we're really excited about that. So tell me when this is held and where it's held. It's always held the Janu in January, the third Monday in January, which is actually the holiday. Right. And it's held at the, now, well, we've been around. So uh -huh. now we've been around with the community. Uh, huh? We've been around the community. And now with the number of people, we're at the Raleigh District uh, Assembly Hall on uh, Hooks River Road. Hooks River Road. Mm -hmm. And the name of it one more time? This is the Goldsboro Raleigh District Assembly. Goldsboro Raleigh District Assembly. Do you know the address offhand? That's 214 Hooks River Road. 214 Hooks River Road. And that that event and it has drawn so many people that you have grown through the years and need a much larger venue. Oh, absolutely. And what we've had is from the beginning of a speaker in a church, we've also adopted a highway back in 1996 when we adopted a highway. And then it was the largest stretch in the state of North Carolina. My goodness. But now we are moving up now and we're having a breakfast along with the program 
and that breakfast this year will start at 7.30 mm -hmm. and uh, go to 8.45 and the actual program is at 9 o'clock. Well, tell me some of the things through the years that you've had in your program. Oh, we've had individuals that have actually played instruments with no professional training at all. We've had groups to come in, such as the high schools, and put on different programs. We've had children events. We've provided little known black history facts of the community, mm -hmm. the county, and the city. Wow. So now what can we expect this year? This year we're really excited. We're hoping that our speaker, uh, I was waiting today to make sure that she could come. And I just tell you tentatively. Okay. Uh, we, have, <laughs> we got her penciled in. Oh yeah. We have <laughs> pencil in Carolyn McKinsky. Tell She's, us who she is. She is one of the children that was in the 16th Street uh, Church bombing back in Alabama. Oh and goodness. where all the little children were killed, but mm -hmm. there were like two in the actual bathroom that survived. And she's one of the two. She's one of the two. And wow, we're waiting. She, she called to let us know that she was really interested in coming. And so we're waiting today that hopefully that she can come. Well, what will her topic and her focus be this year? She's want to talk about her experience. Her personal experience. Her personal experience and, you know, with the children that were there. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually how she's feeling and where they would be today. Well, Terry, who is invited to this event? Who do you expect to attend? Oh, we expect the general public. And uh, we have tickets on sale, uh, $15 a ticket. And you can purchase them at the Community Affairs Office and the uh, Community Affairs members on the committee. They also have tickets. But let me tell you about this also. We have a program booklet of ads. So a number of businesses and organizations have purchased ads. Today is the deadline for those ads. So um, we're looking forward to receiving those booklets and mm -hmm. we make sure that they receive one as well. So this is like a keepsake or oh, a souvenir yes. booklet that people can keep uh, long term. Oh yes, and then we have a little special gift for them as well. We usually have planners. Planners. For, uh, planner for January to December of 2013. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Lateria, if somebody's interested in, in being a sponsor mm -hmm. or having place in an ad in your booklet, how would they go about getting in touch with you? They can contact the Community Affairs Office and we're located at 214 North Center Street, the historic city hall, or they can call us at 919-580-4359. Of course, you know it's always on the website. Of course Facebook, it is. So please, <laughs> we want them to check that as well. And, and that's one of the things that we're trying to always keep the public informed by having so many different types of ways you can access information yes. for the city. So we'll have this information in your office. Yes. We'll have it on the city's website. Mm -hmm. We'll have it on the city's Facebook page. And we'll also be sending updates on tw the city's Twitter account oh, as absolutely. well. Oh, absolutely. So we're always giving you different ways to access the information. Well, Terry, it sounds like a great event. We're expecting large crowds this mm -hmm. year. Hooks River Road, give us the date one more time. The date again is Monday, January 21st, and please, tickets are going quickly. Are they, they are on sale now. Please come and get them and just put them in your wallet so you can remember the color <laughs> of it. And the, it, say, the breakfast starts at 7.30. Back, breakfast is 7.30 and we'll go to 8.45 and the actual program at 9 o'clock. How long can we expect the uh, program to last? Anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. Okay, so go ahead and book, book off a good two hours for yes. the entire thing. Yes. Wonderful. Well, we're looking forward to it. We'll, we'll come back and talk again a little bit closer to the event once you've mm -hmm. got everybody booked and we know exactly what the program will be like. Right now, we want you to pencil in, a, in on your calendar and make sure you save that date to come celebrate with us, Martin Luther King, the program 25th anniversary exactly. celebration. We're expecting big numbers. Mm -hmm. We want you to be there and be a part of it. Well, thank you, LaTerry. Thank you. Look forward to talking to you a little closer to the date. Yes. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Absolutely. If there's more information or more videos you'd like to view to find out more things that are going on throughout our city of Goldsboro, go to the city's website, www.goldsboronc.gov. Visit the city's Facebook page. Like us on that Facebook page so you can stay informed on a regular basis or follow us on Twitter. We have many avenues for you to know what's happening in your city. I'm Kim Best, your host. We'll see you soon. We're back on WGTV today, Monday, November 26th. Thank you for being with us. That's right, Wayne. We want to review all the dates for the coming up Christmas parades because we have so many in our community. I know. Christmas, we want to oh make boy. sure everybody remembers. That's right. Let's do that. What do we have? Let's see. On December the 1st yeah. at 10 in the morning, we yeah. have Mount Olive Christmas Parade. <laughs> That's in Mount Olive, right? Yeah, I believe it might be. <laughs> Just check it. And at 1 p.m., Fremont Christmas Parade. 
Yes, that's in Fremont. Okay, you beat me to <laughs> it. I know. And at 4 p.m., guess who's having one? The Goldsboro Christmas Parade. Oh, really? 4 p.m., right here on Center Street. All right. Let's see. Then the following day, December the 2nd, at 3 p.m., Pikeville has their Christmas Parade. Okay. So that covers Goldsboro, Mount Olive, Fremont, and Pikeville. Wow. And you know what? You might can hit all of them. That's a big weekend. Yeah, because <laughs> really they is. don't That's overlap. Really, weekend. Yeah. That would be they were smart. They did that on purpose. So you can I go from one to the next. And especially if you're, whether you're riding in a car or you have a float, you can just take it from one to the next. Just float right on down. Float right on to the next parade. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> right. Oh, boy. Well, it is that time of year, and it's a festive time of year, and I hope everybody's feeling good about it. I hope so, too. Yeah. Shop local, shop local. Huh? Shop local, <laughs> shop local. I'll say that a lot. That's so. what I thought you said. Shop local, shop local. That's okay. right. Okay, <laughs> okay. Let's see. And I had a thought there, but it just went away with that. <laughs> you just lost it. Huh? Well, that's not hard for me to do. You know. Oh, don't forget the Senior Center is having their grand opening. That's coming up soon. That's sure November is. the 30th. That sure is. I think it's at 20, uh, 2001 East Ash Street. Yes, and it's at 2 p.m. Uh huh. Senior Center grand opening. That big, beautiful building. Mm -hmm. oh, Everybody yeah, needs to go see. Gorgeous. You've been in there and done some... Some it's, tours, and it's it is beautiful. fabulous, isn't it's, it? It is. That is the word. It is fabulous. It is big. It has a lot of amenities, all sorts of, all sorts of things that, that, uh, that seniors can take advantage of, but you have to be a senior. If you're a youngster, 59 or, or un, I'm sorry. <laughs> it just doesn't work for you if just, you're 59 or younger. That's right, young. But you can come on this day and get a tour yeah. and see how beautiful the building is and sure. see what all opportunities they have inside the exactly. senior center. That's right. Because it, in one year, you'll be 60, then you can take advantage. Right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. So you want to know what, what will be available. What to look forward to. Sure. Yeah. And it's the Peggy Seegers uh, That's right. Senior Center, and it's just a fabulous place to go. If I like that word. That's our word of the day, fabulous. Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, if you say so. <laughs> right next door, the Literacy Connections yes. of Wayne County needs volunteers. They need people to help. This is a growing, a growing agency, a growing part of the county and the city, and they need your help. They need help with, uh, they're looking for volunteer tutors willing to give two hours a week to an adult learner. All you need to do is, uh, is be a tutor with, uh, to be a tutor is, is to have a GED or a high school diploma. That's all. Um, and you can help an adult student improve their reading, their writing, their math, or their computer literacy skills. So you don't have to do all of it. You can do the area you feel most sure, comfortable. Sure, the area you're most comfortable in. And all you have to do is give two hours a week. That's all. And it will help somebody tremendously. What a great gift oh, absolutely. during this time of year. No better gift. It is, indeed. To be able to help someone with their reading skills. Mm -hmm. Now, this, this, uh, this could be someone who has, a, who has a problem with dyslexia. It could right. be anyone with a with, a, with a, uh, a, a learning situation here. Reading, writing, math, or computer literacy. Uh, they provide all the training. You don't have to just go in, sit down, and start. They help you get started. So anyway, you can call Pat or anyone at 735-1990. Call Angela at 735-1990 to help with Literacy Connections. Of and that's County. right beside the Senior Center. It is right next door. Mm -hmm. It is indeed. Well, Wayne, on December the 1st, Stony Creek is having their Greenway, Greenway Trail Cleaning. That starts at 8 a.m. It's also a mouthful. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Stony Creek Greenway Trail Cleaning. <laughs> okay, good. Let's see, that's the Wayne County Greenway um, Advocates. They're gonna start at 8 a.m. They would love to have you come out and help yeah. them get that trail ready to walk down. That is a fairly new organization, and they are so pumped about all this, and they're so excited, and it, and it, it, and that's going to be a, a, a great thing. This uh, what's the date on that again? December the first. All right, coming up. Want to want to see you out there? That's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, everyone will benefit from this. The whole community will benefit. They will, and they are working hard to make sure our whole community has a, a yeah. really nice greenway. Yeah. Um, that is really something that draws attention from all over the state. Yeah. And more and more communities are becoming more greenway savvy. Yes. You know, and they are preparing their communities for, for the future. And these greenways are making people really more aware of what we have and what we don't have in yeah, our community. And right. I know she's pre several of those people have presented to the city council about greenways and just making us more aware yeah. of what our community needs and how we need to really focus on 
greenways. And so they're doing a great job. Come out on December the 1st and help them. That reminded me of something when you said a great job. I failed to mention mm -hmm. uh, in the latter part of last week that uh, I, last week I went to the Farm City Banquet last uh, week. Okay. <laughs> One day last week. And what a grand event. It was fantastic. Really? Now tell me, what is Farm City? Farm City is uh, it's an event, uh, well, it's Farm City Week where the, uh, where the city leaders and county leaders and farmers and the agricultural community mm -hmm. kind of all get together and just let each other know how much uh, they appreciate uh, being able to work together and how we benefit from uh, from uh, from working together and the advantages to that, and it's just all it's based just, on agriculture. All based on agriculture. Mm -hmm. It's just a great event. This year's keynote speaker was Kevin Johnson, the director of yes. the agriculture, uh, the uh, cooperative extension service out here, and he just did a fantastic job. It was a great program, and the food was just out of this world. It was just amazing. Um, we have a lot to be proud of in our community, especially agriculture-based. People here in Wayne County, a lot of people just don't realize how big an agriculture yes. community we are. I mean, we're one of the most important counties in the entire country mm -hmm. when it comes to agriculture. We feed people all over the world, for one thing, but we, we feed people all over the country, especially. That's right. And that's a very important part of this community, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, a lot of money comes into Wayne County through because agriculture. Because of that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So uh, I appreciate what the... Uh, uh, the Farm City Banquet meant and what the Farm City community means and uh, our thanks to uh, to everyone in the agriculture community and the farming uh, mm -hmm. farming and the city and the county getting together and uh, and having this event every year and it was packed it was place was packed That's you couldn't awesome. get another person in the building we well, you know the city and the county team up so well together anyway sure. we have such a good collaboration sure we do on we, many different efforts yeah we have nice collaborations yes we do city yeah. and county way to go way city to go. all right uh, way to go county <laughs> all right <laughs> Would you like right. a call from Santa? A call? A call from Santa. You're kidding, right? I'm not kidding. Actually, you might be, well, I think you've passed the age. Oh. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> but if you would like a call from You know, I hear that a lot. Really? You know, yeah. Well, if you'd like a call from Santa. I love a call from Santa. If you're Santa. between the ages of three and nine, <laughs> yes, you can get a call from Santa. You can call the Goldsboro Parks and Recreation Center at 919-739-7491 and you can register. The calls will come between a certain time every day during the month of December and you can line it up so you'll make sure you're home when that call comes in and you can talk with Santa about what's happening the month of December. Oh boy. Yes. Oh boy. Yes. A call from Santa. <laughs> we'll line it up for you, Wayne. We'll okay. get you a call. They'll make, uh, even though you may have passed the, the age range just a little bit, just a little bit, they might make an exception for you. Oh boy. Now that, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yes. I'm just slightly over nine. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> On tomorrow's program, yes. let's see, tomorrow, Tuesday the 27th, mm -hmm. we visit the Parks and Recreation oh, yes. folks, or they come in and talk to us, they or sure you go did. talk to them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've talked with Nanette Sutton uh -huh. of Wayne Net. You know what Wayne Net is? What is it? If you don't, I can't tell you. Oh, it's a, a surprise. It is, a, well, it's kind of a secret, but it's a surprise. A lot of people already know what it is and have taken advantage of it, and it is a fantastic service. Also, we'll be, ta we'll be talking with uh, Jessica Strickland. You know, we kind of, we missed a, a week there. That's right. Uh, but uh, Jessica in with us. We'll be talking about blubs. About what? Blubs. What is a blub? It's a thing you put, no, wait a minute. Well, I turn that around. It's B-U-L-B-S, bulbs. Ah. Uh, I was saying it backwards. What are we going to do with you? I don't know. <laughs> do something. Anyway. Anyway, we're talking about blubs tomorrow with uh, Jessica Strickland. He means bulbs. I'm, yeah, that's what I meant. Of uh, the Cooperative yeah. Extension Service. <laughs> and this is the time of year. All yes, right? it is. It is. All right, let me tell you one last time. There's a turkey shoot at the American Legion on November the 30th. Mark your calendars if you're interested in attending a turkey shoot. Can you tell them where that is, Wayne? It's on Highway 117 South, immediately south of the, uh, of the, of the fairgrounds. fairgrounds. Yeah. All right, so tomorrow morning we'll be back mm -hmm. at 7 a.m. Yes, we will. Join us at that time until then. I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Besson. As you see behind us, this is what's happening in your community.